Well, good Friday morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel and this part two of Will Dale Start. We've got the new ignition switch. We're gonna try it in there and see if we've got some action. So let's get in there and get that switch changed out. Okay, so we've got our new ignition switch. We're gonna just plug it in here and use a screwdriver to try and engage it and see if it works. And I'm feeling pretty confident, so let's do it. Now we wanna make sure that it's also. In park and grab our screwdriver. That's a good sign. So at this point we know that the ignition switch was bad. We're going to put this back in place, get it adjusted, and uh, try it again. Okay, so we've got our switch connected down there. We've got it adjusted all the way forward to get maximum pressure on that rod right here. That when I turn the key it pushes this rod which pushes the switch forward. So the problem we're having right now is that almost the same thing that we had before with the bad ignition switch. I can't get the key to push the rod far enough forward. So we're probably going to make an adjustment on that rod and see if that makes a difference. So we'll try that and we'll come right back. All right, so we've made a little adjustment. Let's try it again. Wow, there we go. So now it looks like we've got the adjustment set properly. We're going to uh, go down and tighten up those two uh, nuts that are holding the switch in place and get this steering column buttoned back up. Okay, well now we've got ourselves a new problem, which I think is part of the same problem, but uh, I got the steering column all buttoned back up here and I went to go try and start it and the first time it turned right over and started. Turned it back, went to try a second time and that's as far as the key is going. So I think it's kind of a two for one or the original problem was simply right in the uh, ignition key part right here. Uh, it seems quite stiff and uh, I can't seem to get it turned. So I guess we're gonna take the steering column back down and mess with it a little bit more. So what we've done here is we've had to tear apart the whole steering column to get at the lock cylinder. And I think we found the problem, let me show you. So there's the position that it's supposed to be in, and when you go to turn it, it's only turning part way. And as you can tell by that tab, it should be going all the way over into the start position. And even if I push in on it to go to the accessory, it won't roll back. So it's looking like we need a new key switch. I'm going to go see if I can find one, and uh, hopefully have this running again. But definitely, I think the tumblers are all bound up in there. Anyway, we'll still go see if we can find a new switch. Okay, so it's now Saturday, and we've got the ignition switch reinstalled. We've got the new lock cylinder in place, and I'm about to test it out to see if turning this will push that and start the truck. Cross your fingers. Gotta love that. So before I button all this up, I'm gonna try it three or four times, make sure it's gonna work every time, because that's what happened last time. I tried it once, it worked, and then when I tried it the second time, it locked up. So as it sits right now, it is working, and then we can start putting everything back together and start driving the truck again. Okay, so as you guys saw in the time lapse, I've got the steering wheel back together. Everything is all buttoned up. We're going to try her one last time before we say we're done. And I'm okay with that. Air conditioning works. The truck now starts again. And the last thing in the whole starting system that we didn't replace was the starter. So I'm convinced that that's still good. Um, but someday we will upgrade that to uh, a beefier starter as well. But anyways, there we go. Everything's back to normal. 
Now you know how to change a lock cylinder and an ignition switch and a square body. So there you have it guys, there is a uh, you know mishap that happened to old Dale, but we've got it fixed very simply and very uh, cost effective because those parts are readily available and they're not expensive at all. Don't forget that this coming Sunday, May 31st, is the deadline for the bumper to bumper challenge. It's something I'm encouraging you guys to do. Uh, a five minute quick video to list off all the vehicles that you have ever owned with a few exceptions in there that we want you to highlight. Uh, the rules are down in the description box below. I hope that you will uh, take part in this. And if you're like me, you've got about 36 vehicles that you've got to uh, highlight in five minutes. So it should be a little bit of a challenge. Uh, but nevertheless, that video will be scheduled to go live at 8 o'clock this coming Sunday. So all of that, we're still looking for submissions on the Submit Your Ride Challenge where I'm asking you guys to submit me a two-minute video on your vehicle, your ride. Whether it's your daily driver, whether it's something that you drive just in the summertime, or if it's something that's very special to you. Two minutes, I'll highlight it on my video, on one of my videos uh, in a future uh, episode. So uh, I hope you guys can take advantage of that. Again, the deadline is May 31st. I've already got a few. Looking forward to sharing those with you guys. Stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you. God bless. Let's do it again.